Um, what, what is planning? <laughs> a billion dollar question. I mean, at, at its heart, for me, planning is making sure that the work that we agencies create works. Um, so making sure that we're keeping, keeping it honest, that people are going to care about it, um, they're going to be interested in it, it's going to have an impact, and then you know, stewarding it to that end and making sure that it is having that impact, that people are caring about it, and that it's kind of changing the behaviours in the way that we want it to. Why are people drawn to it? Um, <laughs> because a simple level, people like uh, studying people. Um, and, you know, popular culture these days, isn't it? It's kind of read about um, the way the world works and why people do what they do. And, you know, at heart of it, that's what, that's what planning is. I remember before I transitioned into planning, uh, and I asked someone, someone this question, and they, and they said, they, they said, well, you can't switch off. Um, right. And I think there's a, you know, if you're a planner, and I think it's the same if you're a creative, you've got to be on the top of your game day in, day out, because there's always a new problem to be solved, there's always a new uh, thought to be had, approach to, approach to take, and um, you don't get much of the kind of downtime where, you, where you know, sometimes, that's why we love looking at images to go into presentations, because it's sort of like, ah, relax, <laughs> just get, get on Flickr. Um, but, you know, most of the time, um, you're sort of put, you know, pushing your creativity and your, your thinking to the max, and um, yeah, that can be exhausting sometimes. Um, it, it's never easy. Um, I, I did the sort of sideways thing, um, right. and uh, and only discovered planning quite late. You know, I studied philosophy, was a musician for a bit, music sponsorship uh, events, digital um, account handling, and then sort of discovered this thing called planning. Um, and and then kind of remembered a bunch of stuff I'd done five years ago and thought actually this is a bit like that. Right. Um, um, so I. I took that sideways thing, and I, I relied on a, um, you know, a, a kind of progressive and brave head of planning taking a gamble on me. Um, and I think that's still so often the case for young planners. It's like they need someone to take a gamble on them and to sort mm -hmm. of look at their unique collection of experiences and say, actually, that that's something that will, will suit the world's planning. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, these days, there's a lot more... Uh, official routes into planning, you know, it's kind of masters and education and yeah. you know, all these kind of career paths. Um, and um, but I guess I think that the important thing is that despite that, it's just we should still all be looking out for um, those kind of lateral movers who, who show all the good characteristics of a great planner, even if they haven't followed the, uh, the traditional path. Because I think, I mean, I, I can't remember which book it is, but there's there's a book that analysed all of the um, really successful planners and I think the only common de uh, denominator was that they'd done something before they were a planner. Mm. Um, and that's similar, I guess, um, with you. Do you think um, people should do something before they jump into planning? And where do you stand with the, the grad scheme side of things? I think we tend to find that the bet that junior planners who come through here have done something first uh, in um, in and around the industry or in and around life so you're not coming straight from an education into into planning because um, because I think there's always danger with planning that it gets a little bit theoretical and it's yeah. best when it's output orientated and it's and you tend to be more output orientated when you've been thrown in the deep end and and, and, and sort of had to see how the world works first hand so, so I, I definitely recommend to people that they go in and do some stuff and, and then and then uh, that kind of planning can, can come out of it but I don't, I, but at the same time we've got a couple of great planners who've, who've come straight from from being a student I think we just encourage them to 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 do stuff um, so you know kind of go and launch a product or a website in your spare time and yeah. see what it takes to get them to come visit it you know do, do something really tangible where you see directly the results and you know that's that's the same kind of experience that people will be getting elsewhere. You know, I, I ran a club night for a while and I, sometimes when I'm doing my best professionalisation I claim that I learned all my planning skills from that because you, you sort of mess up your marketing one week and no one turns up uh, and um, so sometimes with the things we do it's hard to see the results of decisions we've made mm -hmm. um, and I think as a planner you need to see whether the decision you made had an impact or not. I think you know, a lot of young planners are cutting their teeth in social media 
and it's kind of the same thing. It's, you know, I've put something out there, did people like it or not? Why didn't they? Okay, I'll try this out, I'll iterate around it. Yeah, yeah. And quickly you start to understand what, what, what's popular and what floats people's boats. Always three things. <laughs> I can always think of two, and then the third one. What's the third one? Um, I think that the the first one, the one, one that's really important to me, is is the sort of gut instinct for for what's popular. Um, I think you know there's a bit of planning which is around understanding the people and and kind of popular culture and and what's going to catch on, and being able to take. What some often some sort of weird and wonderful ideas that pop into people's heads and, and, and shape them so that they align with the stuff that people are talking about. And I think a lot of that is gut instincts and just you know and, and, and just being interested in uh, what people are talking about there in the world. So I think that's really important. Okay. Um, I think the the sort of counter to that is is you get you know kind of really logical minds that can deconstruct anything, whether it's a focus group or a creative. Uh, presentation or, uh, or some ramblings from a client uh, and sort of say actually what's in here are these four things and that's made up of these three things and kind of, you know, build a structured and clear argument uh, out of that um, and I think I guess the, the third thing is the ability to take those two things and put them together <laughs> in weird and wonderful ways and kind of right. synthesize all that logical stuff into something that's just sort of simple and catchy and captures people's imaginations. Traditionally, um, either account management or research were the two main ways into planning. Do you think that is still true, and or do you think there are uh, more better ways uh, these days of trying to get into planning? I think, you know, most planners come through those two spaces. So the logic would say that the best way to get in is to do one of those two <laughs> things. Um, I don't think it precludes the other ways, and my sort. Of Progressive head of planning who hired me was always saying, "Let's hire some people from, you know, uh, outside advertising because we, you know we know advertising. What we want is people to tell us the stuff we don't know. So let's get someone from, you know, a TV company or you know, production house or you know, uh, an architect or any of these these places." Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think being in those spaces in any way sh- kind of makes it harder to get into the world of planning. Um, I think I think you know. You just need to make sure you understand the industry and and the way it works and have a passion for brands and latest bits of marketing and all the rest of it that, yeah. that kind of go with the natural planning talent. I think, you know, as a junior planner, you are the um, you're the sort of owner of the owner of the data in many ways. You're you're the person who's going to get the time and opportunity to go deep and get to understand all the sort of potential information, you know, competitor, category, consumer, uh, you know, within, for, for that particular client. Um, so my, my, my sort of first day thing would be going and get hands on and just, you know, start reading um, and then you know, create something, come out and say, right, these are the five most interesting things that I discovered reading through all the, all the, um, all the sort of background data and, you know, and, and probably sort of two or three of those five things either people won't have thought of or won't have thought about for a couple of years and we'll go, oh yes, that's, that's interesting. So, yeah, I think trying to get inputs and turn them into outputs as quickly as possible. I think, um, you know, you, you never stop learning uh, and you need to make sure you never stop learning. But at the same time, I think if you sort of do the things that you're passionate about and do them in a way that, that feels interesting to you, you will develop your own kind of planning persona and your own planning style and, and, and the rest of it. Um, I think the biggest shift in the, in the planning career happens at the slightly later stage when you need to start delegating and bringing in planners underneath you and I think that's often for planners the, the hardest thing because you're used to you know, being this sort of you know, single entity in, in the mix that's, that's you know, thinking things through and offering insights and, and doing a lot of the, um, the sort of synthesis in your own head and then you need to start making that happen in other people's heads uh, and still retain the same clarity of insight and the rest of it and I think that that's one of the hardest things to do is um, um, is to sort of broaden your influence while not doing everything yourself. I think it's I think it's always been important I think it's even more important now um, 
I think there are there are more planners out there, and there's more planning jobs out there. Uh, they vary more greatly, um, and you know they're appearing in lots of places that haven't had planning before, and are growing their own their own functions. And in the midst of all that, you need some consistency. Uh, you, you know, you need someone who can, um, uh, you know, kind of set a uh, set the agenda and and kind of uh, be a bit of a benchmark of what what, what is planning, um, how is it changing. Um, Bring people together because one thing I've learned is planners aren't sort of competitive <laughs> like uh, some other people within an agency. You can put planners from different agencies together in a room and they'll just talk about what they do because they care about what they do. Right. Um, and you know you, you kind of want a, an objective body and objective space to do that. And the APGs um, you know, is that place. You know, it's it's a great industry because the rules. Are changing every day, um, and you know the, the simple best way to get new ideas is to read a lot. Um, so you know, uh, the thing I would encourage more than anything, and you know, the best training there is, is you know, reading reading books on whatever the new the, you know, new thoughts are around how the way, the way the world works. Reading old books about the same things. Yeah. Um, you know, reading what other planners talking about how they, they came to their conclusions. Um, I think if you if you do enough of that then that sort of strategic voice in your head appears and, and, and you know, can take that kind of provocative objective look at at, at anything um, mm -hmm. and then you can then you can start applying it in the next creative review, the next presentation, whatever the next uh, the next big challenge is. I think but for me, the the most important thing is um, is sort of it's almost like letting the ego go. It's, you know, being generous with your time, with your energy, with your insights, um, and not expecting any credit uh, for that contribution. Trying to get ideas to kind of happen out there in the world, and never feel precious about whether, whether those ideas came from you or not. Not worrying whether. Um, the work is on line, in line with the strategy uh, as you saw it, but as long as it's solving the problem um, in a way that, that still aligns with the client strategy, um, not being precious about insights. Um, I think if you I think if you do that and um, and you know just kind of kind of throw your support and your help out there to the creative process and act as a facilitator, then you'll succeed. Then you'll then you'll be a great planner. <laughs> Benefit Iris Worldwide, thank you very much. Thank you.